Tip number one, you can actually get back materials from items that you have already been master working. For example, right here, I found a triple crater epic um, dagger. So I can replace this dagger. I don't need it anymore. And instead of selling it to the NPC, I'm actually salvaging it. And now you will see right here, we are getting material back from the pit. So never sell anything to gold that has a, a master working on it. Tip number two, always temper an item before you are doing enchantment rolls or whatever. Like here, for example, I might want to get roll the life off and get cooldown reduction. So I will first temper the item and get what I'm looking for. Because tempering, as you can see right here, costs no gold. It will just use materials that you have in mass anyways. And tempering can trick the item. That means you only have five rolls. And if you fail those and you do not get what you want, you obviously do not want to have invested already millions. And tip number three, if you are spending your obols, there is actually only one correct choice that you can do at the moment that gives you the best return of investment. And this is buying amulets only. The reason for that is amulets with greater affixes are used in many, many builds. And those items that you are getting here are not compound. So those can be sold to other players as well. And on average, the value of amulets and the amount of builds that are wearing them is like the highest. And that's why I would always spend my obols on amulets. Even though I would have like a best, perfect, best in slot amulet, I would still do it because it will give me the most gold for the ovals that I spent. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion needed. Currently, 98.9% .9 of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. Even though we are reaching nice view numbers of up to 20k and sometimes almost close to 400 likes. So I would like to offer you a deal. You watch this video all the way to the end and if you learned something new in this guide you have to subscribe tip number four for season number four you can actually get invincible with four classes probably the invincibility most people know about is the sorcerer where you are able to get your flame shield longer than actually the cooldown lasts by getting flame shield to a high rank so you want flame shield with the greater affix onto your chest and then as a tempering, you will roll for flame shield duration. You can do this at the pants as well. And on the amulet, on the ring with the Tyrasha, you can get cooldown reduction. And with your offense, you can get cooldown reduction. And this combination will actually allow you to be able to be invincible with the sorcerer. And this is currently actually so powerful that um, you can get a flame shield duration of 6.7 seconds and a cooldown of only 4.44 seconds. So you do not need to hit all of those perfect to be able to work with this. Like you can hit like three fourths of it or you don't have to hit like a double crit on cooldown or on the flame shield duration. So getting invincibility with the sorcerer is really easy. But this also works on the Bavarian and here we can go with the martial vigor. So same thing, we will roll the martial vigor and we get um, like the um, temper hits on it and the master working. And then we are able to get 108 up to uh, um, damage reduction against elite. And if we are honest, like if we're doing pit or whatever, the normal monsters are easy to survive, even as a barbarian, because their damage does not scale to a certain point. At some point, only their HP scales and barbarian is really tanky. And so this makes you immune to bosses and of course the normal elite so yeah you're basically safe um one thing that's funny about it it actually also makes you immune in pvp because other players are counted as elite then it's also possible on the rook and on the rook we can get it here via the agile where we are able to get 108 percent dodge and it's the same instead of martial vigor we are rolling agile um Another thing that's important to note here, we, are get, we have to press a button every three seconds to do that. So we do have to optimize the rest of our gear for cooldown reduction and using spells that allow us to do it. But Sorcerer can do it like it, it, um, once you're getting used to that kind of playstyle, it's falling really, really easy. And it's actually more fun if you press a lot of buttons. And then build that has also been around for a long time, but is now really consistent and keeping invulnerability up 
the whole time. And this is the blood mist necromancer. So to get that to work, you need um, blood mist, then you need this so overpowers can reduce your cooldown, and that blood mist is leaving behind corpses, cause this synergizes with the aspect um, of explosive mist, which makes every corpse explosion of um, reducing the cooldown by 0 0.9 seconds. And if you time that with tempering um, for blood mist cooldown reduction and cooldown reduction on your gear, like your um, offhand and onto your defensive stats, you will actually be able to keep it up permanent. Tip number four, the fastest way to level is spamming nightmare dungeons that are 10 levels above your own. And to ensure this, you can craft vigils at the occultist. And to figure out what level range a sigil is, you always add 54. So here, for example, the monsters here would start at level 80 when I'm crafting them. And that way, you can ensure that the sigils you're going are at least 10 levels above and you get the highest EXP bonus by level. Tip number five, you can actually stack elixirs. And the elixirs that you can stack is just like a normal one that you're dropping in Helltide, for example, or that you can craft. And this 15% increased life elixir, which you can craft here at the quest elixir at the alchemist. To unlock this and to have a double stack like I am and get the 15% EP the whole time, you will be going to Gear Cool and you will go in this house here all the way to the back and this guy will give you a quest. Once you have completed that quest, you can craft that. Now let's go over some hell type tips. Tips number seven. You will not Use a Baneful Heart if you're putting your heart into the stone at the same time as someone else or slightly after them, but you will still receive the full drops of the Blood Maiden. Tip 8. If you are farming Blood Maiden and you are porting into city, your server sometimes resets and even if you put in a Baneful Heart, um, you will not be in the same group as you previously were. So always invite all the people around you or do it with friends. So when you port to city, sell your items and you come back, you are still in the progress. If you are farming Blood Maiden and there is a big group of people that can kill the trash, do not stay and, and wait until the boss is coming. Actually scatter around, do side quests, opening chests or farm close by so you get the benefit of the monsters that are dying there and the cinders from the close by mob. Tip number 10. If you are, for example, low level, like trashy level 55 and first going into world tier 4, you can actually wait using with a profane mind cage and once the blood maiden is just before dying you can then pop it and it goes from 103 to 113 and you can get the superior loot and eat. tip 11 you can already drop item power 925 if you are level 82 by leveling in hell tight and activating a profane mind cage tip number 12 make sure that you're not over capping your defensive stat. Armor in this season cannot go higher than 9,230. Afterwards, every stat is useless. In most builds, you can reach that by having one crater epic um, onto your armor and then putting skulls in here if you don't need it for resistance. For resistance, the cap is 70% at the moment. There are some ways to increase that cap with like um, skills and um, different pockets and stuff like this. But overall, if you see you are at 70, do not invest anymore. You're basically wasting your stats. Tip 13. The tech speed in Diablo 4 has two different tabs. And it's really important to know for your class which source of the tech speed goes into which tab. Both tabs are at 100%. And here on the guide, I will link it. It's from Aurelian. Shout out. He made the work and actually put in, um, like for every class, the first cap and the second cap right here, like what counts for it to work. So you can squeeze out that last bit of additional damage by perfecting your attack. Tip 14. Another thing you need to know about the attack speed in Diablo 4 is the breakpoint. So Diablo 4 runs at 60 FPS. And in the same guide as previously mentioned, we will have um, this little table right here. So if you're looking at the skill puncture, Probably everyone has used it if you play the rogue at least once to check it out. Um, you will realize that at base it will take 26 frames for one attack. If you are then adding attack 
speed onto your build, the frames for your attack will decrease because you get more into that 60 uh, FPS cycle. And you will realize that if you are not able to reduce by a frame, the attack speed you are putting in will be lost. So for example, right here, we, let's look at 20 to 144 and 19 to 150. So if we would have 1.49 attack speed, we would not be dealing any more damage. So we would pro, pro, basically invest 5% of our attack speed into a useless stat. Once we reach the 1.5, then we are actually doing more damage. Tip number 15. On average, it's actually faster to speed level four characters to max reputation at the Iron Wolf and get a Resplendent Spark from the last item than it is to actually farm the boss materials, kill Durial, Andariel, and drop an Uber. So if you're in need for an Uber fast to make your build work, this is the fastest way for you to go. Tip 16. If you are level 20 and 50, this is the easiest way to get all aspects to max uh, on a character. Because if you go to the alchemist, you will see here this allowance cache that costs almost nothing. It's just like random materials that you have tons of and a bit of gold. But um, like this, for new characters or other characters, you can get um, easy aspects. Because you will craft legendaries. And then you go and then you can just enchant and get the aspect going or right? just like that power spike itself. It's really easy. And one bonus tip, maybe you have noticed the name of that rogue right here. It's called Tempo Only. And the reason why I made this rogue is actually to farm the legendary crit damage recipe so I can temper crit damage. Because currently rogue is the only class that can temper it. And you can actually trade your items onto the rogue, temper the crit damage there and then use it on your other characters. Tip 17. It is now possible if you are enchanting an item to actually getting a preview of what possible things you can do. Like here I have accounts that are sadly pricked. And um, if you click on that eye, you can see exactly what other options you can get. And obviously, if I have intelligence greater epic, tactic greater epic, I would want to have a critical strike chance. I can get here, but this is the perfect thing. Tip 18. Here at the Alchemist, you can actually, even though it has nothing to do with the pit, craft pit materials under transmutation crafting materials. And here you can exchange, for example, the, um, the legendary material that you're farming in the pit. And you can go and turn it into rare ones or blue ones. And this means it makes no sense to farm anything lower than pit 61. And another rule is if you are farming pit and you can clear a pit in three minutes, this is the best Ethereum per hour that you are getting. So do not make the mistake and go into like really high pits that take you forever to clear. Try to find a pit higher than 61 that you can clear in three minutes and this is your sweet spot to farm. Tip 19. You can actually find legendary items in shop and even with greater affixes. So if you are selling, always keep your eyes open, though the shines is really rare, so it's not worth actively looking for them. Tip 20. The best way to get like high amounts of gold is actually doing whispers and then getting the caches from the tree in return. But not all caches give the same amount of money out of them. You always want to aim for a chaos cache. Those give the highest rewards. And if you have the option, of course, between a legendary and a normal one, you will choose legendary. And if there's no chaos cache available, you will choose the cache that is currently the weakest spot in your gear. Tip 21. Getting to Worthy, the highest rank regarding the rewards, in the weekly ladder is extremely easy. You won't believe how easy it is. You can actually do it freshly 100 with level gear and you will be getting it. And each week, this will give you four caches, basically for almost zero effort that you're putting in. So everyone should take this every week, even though if you don't like plan on competing on the leaderboard.